Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be continuing our series on sequences by looking at growth and decay problems in geometric sequences. And this particular video is aimed at our students in grade 11 and 12 across Australia in math methods, general maths and maths applications. And this video is all about the worked examples. So we're going to be actually using our compound interest formula and our depreciation formula from previous videos and adapting that in growth and decay problems. So let's kick it off and get started. A town of 50,000 people is growing by 11% per annum. Determine its population PN in 10 years time. I could use the geometric sequence rule off my formula sheet. I'm actually gonna show you though, that this is a model of growth. So I'm gonna adapt my compound interest rule in this particular situation. So in this particular situation, my amount at time zero is my principal, that's 50,000. And my interest rate is actually my growth rate of 11%. So I need to make sure I change that into a decimal and then I'm going to raise that to the power of 10 because I'm told that it's in 10 years time so I've got 10 years of growth. So I'm going to follow my order of operations rules here, bid mass from primary school and start with the brackets. Let's break that down first to 1.11 and then I stands for indices so we're going to raise 1.11 to the power of 10. We've got no division so we're going to move on to M for multiply in bid mass and multiply 50,000 by 2.839 and so on. Don't forget to leave that number on your calculator, don't round early and we're going to find an answer p10 will be equal to 141,971.0483 now it's really important here that you make sure you give a statement at the end and round that appropriately you can't have 0.0483 of a person so you need to round that down to the right number of people our next worked example here is now a different model it's a model of decline now, I do wanna take a step backwards and just refer back to the previous example. We know this is a geometric sequences video, so all of our examples on here are geometric sequences. However, if you're in an exam, you do need to stop and think and work out, is this gonna be an arithmetic series or is it gonna be a geometric series? Now, because you've got growth or decline by a percentage, that's your indication that it's going to be a model of geometric sequence. If it was going to be declining or increasing by a fixed amount of dollars or a fixed amount of people, you know that you're going to use an arithmetic sequences principle. So in this case, I've got store A and they sold a certain amount of clothes in the year 2019 and we're predicting sales into the future to the year 2030. So it's important to note here in this question as well that we already know the sales for 2019. So we're actually starting our predictions into the year 2020. So even though 125,000 is going to be our principal, it's at the end of 2019, not at the beginning. That's gonna be important for us to remember in a moment when we try and work out how many years we need to do this for. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna take my depreciation rule for a geometric sequence, which is basically a modified compound interest rule. I'm subtracting the rate from I. So from one, and I'm going to substitute in the information that I've been given. So I've got $125,000 is my starting value at the end of 2019. And I've changed 3.2% into a decimal by dividing that by 100. And I've got a power of 11. Now, it's very tempting to just do 2030, take away 2019. And in this case, it just happens to be 11. And that's wonderful. That's our power. But it's also important to do some counting on your fingers. Now, 2019 has already happened. We already know the sales. So we have to predict the sales for 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 2030. So 11 years of sales need to be predicted. That's important for you to do that little bit of an extra count when you're doing um, subtracting one year for another. It's always important to count on with your fingers. And I'll show you why in a later example. Okay, let's slide that down again and evaluate what's in brackets, then raise that to the power of 11, and then multiply that by 125,000. And we're gonna get sales of 87,405.54. Remembering that we're predicting sales in dollars, so we need to give our final answer as a statement, rounded to two decimal places and with a dollar sign. Let's look quickly at worked example three. The mayor of Appleton has doubled the police force. He presents the following crime statistics and predicts the town will continue to follow in the same sequence and that by 2040, Appleton will have no crime. Is the mayor correct? Now we've given some information about 
the crimes in 2021, 22, 23, and 24. So our first step is we have to work out if it's an arithmetic or a geometric sequence. Now, I'm pretty sure we know it's geometric because that's the kind of video we're watching, but we do need to make sure we prove that if this is an exam question. So firstly, we ask ourselves, is this arithmetic or geometric? Now, if it was arithmetic, then I should be able to take 2022 and take 2021's crime statistics away from it and get a common difference when I repeat that with year three and two and then year four and three. As you can see in this situation, I don't have a common difference. It's actually reducing by a different amount each year. It's important that you show you're working. This could be work up, worth up to one or two marks in an exam situation. So we know it's not arithmetic and it's important to state that it's not. It's not arithmetic, there's no common difference. So that leads us to the conclusion it's probably geometric. So we need to prove that as well. So once again, we're going to take that second term, divide it by the first term, and we get the common ratio of 0.85. Now, I have recently marked a bunch of Year 12 exams, and a lot of Year 12 seem to get this back to front. They do term one divided by term two, and they end up with the wrong common ratio. So it's really important that you know how to prove something's geometric, but also that you have the right numerator and the right denominator. Now, if we repeat that for Year 3 and 2, and then Year 4, four and three, we're going to get the same common ratio for each year of 0.85. What that's telling us is one minus 0.85 is 15%. So we've actually got a 15% reduction per year. Okay, so we've got that geometric, we've stated it's geometric. Now we need to follow it through to the year 2040. So firstly, time zero is going to be 38,500. That's our amount at the very beginning. In our table, year two, which is 2018, is actually term one, and then 2019 is term two, term three is 2020. So it's important that you label your terms correctly. So our amount at time zero was 38,500. Now, all the way on, counting on my fingers, I get term 24 is 2040. And I'm going to simply use my general rule for a geometric sequence. I'm going to take the amount at time zero and multiply that by 0.85 to the power of 24 years. Now you might be wondering, how did I get 24 years? Well, I actually had to count on, on my fingers. So I've got term zero is 2017, and then I counted on all the way through to 2040. Do not do take away 2040, take away 2020, or you'll get the wrong answer. And what I'm going to find when I work this out nice and slowly is that I'm going to have 778.96 crimes. Well, you can't have 0.96 of a crime, so you've got to round that up. And what I'm actually going to do here is give a statement. The mayor, first of all, is incorrect because that's the question I'm being asked. Is the mayor correct? So the answer is no, the mayor's not correct. Crime has been drastically reduced down to 779 crimes in the year 2040. But it will never be more than, um, it is a lot more than zero. It will never actually be zero because it's a geometric sequence. So each year I'm going to be reducing the amount of crime by 15%. Eventually I will end up with less than one crime, but technically speaking, it will never actually reach zero. Let's look at our next, next example. A city dump contained 100 tons of rubbish at the beginning of 2020. The dump has a capacity of 350 tons. That means it cannot take any more than 350 tons. Now, if we're adding rubbish to that dump at a rate of 12.28% per year, we've got a growth model here. In what year will the rubbish dump reach its capacity? So we can once again use our compound interest formula because we have a growth model in a geometric sequence. And what I'm going to do is substitute my starting amount is 100 tonnes and my finishing amount is 350. And I'm going to change my rate of growth from 12.28% to a decimal, 0.1228. And I'm going to raise that to the power of n. And then I'm going to simplify what's in brackets. And I'm going to multiply, I'm sorry, divide both sides by 100. That's why the left-hand side is now 3.5. And then I've got one of two methods that I could use. I can either use the iterative function on my calculator, or I can use logarithms if I'm in methods. So we can also use recursion, a third method. I'm going to show you with recursion first. It can be a little bit tedious, but um, especially if there's a lot of values for n. In this case, there's not too many. So let's use recursion. So at the beginning of 2020, when time was zero, 
our value for n was also zero and we started with 100 tons. As we work our way along, we actually work our way along to our 11th term where n is equal to 11 and we'll have 357.54 um, tons of rubbish in the dump in that particular year at the beginning of 30, 2031. So somewhere between 2030 and 2031 is our target time showing shown using recursion where our value for the dump actually kicks over and goes beyond capacity. So sort of towards the end of 2030 where n is equal to 10. We can also use another method. We're going to use the iterative function after we've written a statement. So we're going to use that on our calculator. Let's get that up now. So I'm going to enter into the calculator 1.1228 and press the equals button. Now this is to the power of 1, n equals 1. When I multiply it by itself, 1.1228 and press the equals button again, I'm squaring it. Now I'm going to raise it to the power of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, almost there, 11, and we've just gone past. So we know between n equals 10 and n equals 11 is when the rubbish dump reaches capacity. And once again, I would need to write a statement for that. Also a good idea to show some working and to uh, present that information every so often. I would probably maybe do every third year or every second or every fourth year. Okay, so the dump will reach capacity in the 10th year, which is during 2030. And now once again, this is important, you count this off on your fingers. So 2020 is when n equals 0. 2021, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is 2030. So sometime during 2030. We could also do this using logarithms. And I'm going to use my log laws to bring my power of n down by raising both sides to the log of base 10. So let's put log of base 10 on both sides of my equation. N comes down in front and now I can divide both sides by log of 1.1228 to get N all by itself. Now it's very important when you put this on your calculator that you uh, put your denominator in brackets because sometimes um, some calculators get their order of operations a bit confused. So I like to do it in brackets. Okay, and once you've evaluated that on your calculator, you're going to get n equals 10.815. Very precise answer. So you know it's during the 10th year, which we've just worked out, was 2030. And here we are with our final example today. A colony of 125,000 rare monkeys was decreasing at a rate of 5.8% per annum for eight years. A breeding program was introduced. What growth rate would be needed for the monkey population to return to its original level within five years? So we've got a little bit of complexity with this question. Firstly, the monkey population declines. So, and then it starts to grow. And we're looking at percentage decline and percentage growth. So that tells us straight away, it's a geometric sequence. Now, when it's declining and it's only going to decline for eight years, it's going to reach a certain level. And then we have this intervention and then we're going to change our formula. So we're going to start firstly though, with a model of decline. So let's substitute our information in, 125,000 is our starting value. And that declines for eight years at the rate of 5.8% per annum. And so we're going to find at the end of the eighth year, we're going to have 77,503 monkeys. Now, we now need to apply a growth rate to this, but we don't know what that growth rate is going to be. We're going to use the compound interest formula again. And 77,503 monkeys becomes our new value for our new principle in the compound interest formula. So we want to get back to our original level of 125,000 monkeys. That would be our value for A. And our principle this time is going to be 77,503. And this time we change it to a growth rate. So we're adding the interest rate to one instead of taking it away. And we know we want to do this within five years. So our power is five. So we're going to divide both sides by 77,503. And then we're going to take the fifth root of both sides so that we can get one plus i by itself. And then we're going to subtract both sides by one and we'll get i is equal to 0.100318. Now that's a decimal. We need to change that back into a percentage by multiplying that by 100. And we'll get a growth rate of 10.03% is needed to get the monkey population back to its original level. 
Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video on growth and decay in geometric sequences. We're going to look at some of geometric sequences in our next video, which is a special just for our year 11 method students. And then we're going to follow some complex problems from past exams. And a lot of those complex problems won't tell you whether it's arithmetic or geometric. So we'll have to work that out for itself. Won't tell you if it's growth or decline. Won't tell you what rule to use. We're going to work all that out together. And I'm hoping you did really well on these questions today if you were pausing the video as you went. And I'd like to say welcome to all of our new subscribers. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and follow us on Facebook. That's the best way to get latest information and to keep us posted on how you're feeling about different things, to ask questions and to request videos. You can also contact us via emails. And once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody that really supports us here. It's made my day and my year to be able to support you and your mathematics. I'm Natalie McClatchy. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.